Then after singing the halal, they walked out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus then said to them, Tonight you will all fall away because of me. For the scripture says, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go to Galilee ahead of you. Peter responded, Though all may fall away because of you, I never will. Jesus replied, The truth is, before the cock crows tonight, you will deny me three times. Peter said, Even if I must die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Stay here while I go over there and pray. Jesus took along Peter, James, and John and started to feel grief and anguish. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieving to the point of death. Please stay here and stay awake with me. Jesus went on a little further and fell prostrate in prayer. Abba, if it is possible, let this cup pass by me, but not what I want, what you want. When Jesus returned to the disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you stay awake with me for even an hour? Be on guard and pray that you may not undergo trial. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Withdrawing a second time, Jesus prayed, Abba, if this cup cannot pass by me without my drinking it, your will be done. Once more, Jesus returned and found the disciples asleep. They could not keep their eyes open. Jesus left them again, withdrew somewhat, and prayed it for a third time, saying the same words as before. Finally, Jesus returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping, still taking your rest? The hour is upon us. The chosen one is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be on our way. Look, my betrayer is here. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a great crowd with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. Judas had arranged to give them a signal. Whomever I embrace is the one, he said. Take hold of him. He immediately went over to Jesus and said, Shalom, Rabbi, and embraced him. Jesus said to Judas, Friend, just do what you're here to do. At that moment, the crowd surrounded them, it laid his hands on Jesus, and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those who accompanied Jesus drew a sword and slashed at the high priest's attendant, cutting off an ear. Jesus said, Put your swords back where it belongs. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. Don't you think I can call on my Abba, God, to provide our over twelve legions of angels at a moment's notice? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled which says it must happen this way? Then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I a robber that you have come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me? Every day I sat teaching in the temple precincts, yet you never arrested me. All this happened in the fulfillment of the writings of the prophet. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had seized Jesus led him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the religious scholars and elders had convened. Peter followed at a distance, as far as the high priest's residence. Going inside, Peter sat down with the guards to await the outcome. The chief priests, with the whole Sanhedrin, were busy trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. They discovered none, despite the many false witnesses who took the stand. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man has declared, I can destroy God's sanctuary and rebuild it in three days. The high priest rose and addressed Jesus. Have you no answer? What about this testimony leveled against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest then said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether or not you are the Messiah, the firstborn of God. You have said it yourself, Jesus replied, but I tell you, as soon as you will see the Chosen One seated at the right hand of the power 
and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his robes and said, Blasphemy! What further need do you have of witnesses? You yourselves have heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? They responded, He deserves death. Then they spat at his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped Jesus, saying, Play the prophet for us, Messiah. Who struck you? While this was happening, Peter was sitting in the courtyard. One of the attendants came over and said, You were with Jesus, the Galilean, too, weren't you? But Peter denied it in front of everyone. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. When Peter went out to the gate, another attendant saw him and said to those nearby, This one was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he cursed and denied it. I don't know him. A little while later, some bystanders came over to Peter and said, You certainly are one of them. Even your accent gives you away. At that, Peter began cursing and swore. I don't know the man. Just then, a rooster began to crow, and Peter remembered the prediction Jesus had made. Before the rooster crows, you will disown him three times. Peter went out and cried bitterly. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of all the people made their plans on how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They replied, that's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. And then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the silver, observing, it's against the law to deposit this in the temple treasury, since it is blood money. After some discussion, they used the money to buy Potter's Field as a cemetery for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called Blood Field. On that occasion, what was said through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took 30 pieces of silver, the price for the one whose price was set by the children of Israel, and they paid it out for Potter's Field, just as the Most High commanded me. Then Jesus was arraigned before Pontius Pilate, the governor, who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You say that I am. Yet when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no reply. Pilate said to Jesus, Surely you hear how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus did not answer Pilate. On a single count, much to the governor's surprise, now, on the occasion of a festival, the governor was accustomed to release one prisoner, whomever the crowd would designate. At the time, they were holding a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you wish me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, the so-called Messiah? Pilate knew, of course, that it was out of jealousy that they handed Jesus over. While Pilate was still presiding on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. I had a dream about him last night, which had been troubling me all day long. But the chief priests and elders convinced the crowds that they should ask for Barabbas and have Jesus put to death. So when the governor asked them, which one do you wish me to release for you? They all cried, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what am I to do with Jesus, the so-called Messiah? Crucify him, they all said. Why? What crime has he committed? Pilate asked, but they only shouted louder, Crucify him. Pilate finally realized that he was getting nowhere with this. In fact, a riot was breaking out. Pilate called for water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, declaring as he did so, I am innocent of this man's blood. 
The responsibility is yours. The whole crowd said in reply, let his blood be on us and on our children. At that, Pilate released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus whipped with cat o' nine tails, then handed him over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus inside the praetorium and assembled the whole court around him. They stripped off his clothes and wrapped him in a scarlet military cloak. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they pressed it onto his head and stuck a reed in his right hand. Then they began, began to mock Jesus by dropping to their knees, saying, All hail, King of the Jews! They also spat at him. Afterward, they took hold of the reed and struck Jesus on the head. Finally, when they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucifixion. On their way out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon, whom they pressed into service to carry the cross. Upon arriving at a site called Golgotha, which means skull place, they gave Jesus a drink of wine mixed with a narcotic herb, which Jesus tasted but refused to drink. Once they had nails, nailed Jesus to the cross, they divided his clothes among them by rolling dice. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. Above his head, they put the charge against him in writing. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified along with Jesus, one at his right and one at his left. People going by insulted Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, So you are the one who was going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself, why don't you? Come down off that cross if you are God's own. The chief priests, the religious scholars, and the elders also joined in the jeering. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. So he's the king of Israel. Let's see him come down from that cross, and then we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now, if God is happy with him. After all, he claimed to be God's own. The robbers who had been crucified with Jesus jeered at him in the same way. At noon, a darkness fell over the whole land until about three in the afternoon. At that hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This made some of the bystanders who heard it remark, He's calling out for Elijah. One of them hurried off and got a sponge. He soaked the sponge in cheap wine and, sticking it on a reed, tried to make Jesus drink. The others said, Leave him alone. Let's see whether Elijah comes to his rescue. Once again, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Then he gave up his spirit. Okay. Suddenly, the curtain in front of the Holy of Holies was ripped in half from top to bottom. The earth quaked. Boulders were split and tombs were opened. Many bodies of the Holy Ones who had fallen asleep were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and his cohort, who were standing guard over Jesus' body, were terror-stricken at seeing the earthquake and all that was happening. They said, clearly, this was God's own. Yet you bore our illnesses and carried our suffering. We thought you were being punished, struck down by God, and brought low. But it was for our offenses that you were pierced, for our sins that you were crushed. Upon you lies a chastening that brings us wholeness, and through your wounds we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us goes our own way. But Yahweh has laid upon you the guilt of us all. Though treated harshly, you bore it humbly, 
and never opened your mouth. Like a lamb being led to slaughter or a sheep before shears, you were silent and never opened your mouth. Seized by force and condemned, you were taken away. Who would have ever foreseen your destiny? You were taken from the land of the living through the sin of my people who deserved the punishment. You were buried with evildoers and entombed with the rich, though you had done no wrong, and deceit was not found in your mouth.